Namaste. Uh, today I wanted to talk about uh, insecurity and how meditation can help. Um, most of us have been through situations in our lives where we feel a little bit unworthy um, or just not as worthy, worthy as we hoped. Um, we feel a bit inadequate, maybe other people are better than us or stronger or smarter or more attractive or have better situations in life and we feel um, that we're not quite up to standard or some, somehow or other we feel like we're a little bit defective in some way and we feel this pain of insecurity and it, most people experience it at some point in their life you know maybe they someone else got a job that they were more qualified for and you feel like well, why did they get it or you know, someone doesn't love us as much as we hoped they don't have that unconditional love for us that we need and so we have these feelings of insecurity and we can sometimes think oh well it's because this particular situation happened or maybe you know my mum did something or maybe this person did something or said something or treated me in a certain way and that's why I have these feelings of um, unworthiness um, and it may only manifest occasionally but when it does come up it's a very painful experience to go through and it doesn't it doesn't sit right and you know our friends may go oh you're okay you know don't worry about it but it's it's deeper than that it's not a superficial thing it's it's a, a deep pain that we experience and so when we look outside into the world and we hope to find our security and our worthiness from our abilities and from how other people see us or how they relate to us or how they perceive us then we're going to have this feeling manifest sometimes because people can't give us the love, um, the adoration, the um, acknowledgement that we all seek and as a spiritual being we need to feel unconditional love. Every single person needs to know that they're unconditionally loved and that we don't have to be anybody special. We don't have to be good at anything. We can have all sorts of faults. It doesn't matter. Underneath that, we're an eternal spiritual being. And as an eternal spiritual being, we are actually part and parcel of a supreme being, the supreme friend, and the person who does love us unconditionally and that's what we're always seeking but we keep forgetting to go within for that experience and we keep looking outside for it and we think that if, if a particular situation would change then I will feel that love, I will feel that security but it's just a temporary situation it's like a, a band-aid over something that's there and we all want to feel always that we're okay that you know we don't have to be anything different than who we are of course you know our character can always improve you know we always have little bits and pieces of our um, psyche that are not as good as you know maybe we feel a bit angry or envious towards somebody else and most people don't like to acknowledge the feeling of envy, envy but you know we see that someone is seems to be loved more than us or appreciated more than us then if we can be thoughtful and reflective then we can it we can see deeper as to what actually it is that we're experiencing because if we just look on a superficial level we miss the opportunity of going deeper within and finding a real solution but to find a real solution we need to know that there's a problem there you know if we don't see there's a problem there then we won't look for the root cause so that we can cruise along in our life on a fairly superficial kind of level and not go through that depth of change that we need you know as a spiritual being having a human experience um, so often um, circumstances in our lives will, will bring these things up and then you know we might squash them or situations change and 
they don't manifest anymore, that insecurity or that vulnerability, um, those feelings of inadequacy, they don't manifest. And then something else happens and up they come again. And then we might try and squash them. We may try and, you know, drown them with a bit of, you know, have a drink or, you know, take some drugs or something or go to the doctor, you know, if I, you know, I feel depressed, I have this anxiety, I have this, you know, feeling of stress that, you know, somehow or other I'm just not as worthy as I want to be, you know. And we all need to feel completely secure in, in the core of our being. And the process of meditation, the process of self-realization, is to come to understand that when these situations arise, they're a perfect opportunity for us to go inside and to try and really understand who am I in the deepest sense of the word? Who am I really? Why am I here? What, I'm, what am I actually looking for? Why am I looking for my security and validation from somebody else when really those people can can move out of our life and we may never see them again and and then what you know what are we going to feel then you know try and find it our validation and our feeling of self-worth from someone else you know so we just keep looking outside for that validation and feeling of self-worth that i am lovable Know? So if we can understand we're actually an eternal spiritual being, there is a supreme friend and a supreme being who does love us unconditionally, warts and all. We don't have to be good at anything. We don't have to be smart. We don't have to be beautiful. We don't have to have anything, any qualifications at all to experience that we're actually loved and appreciated and worthy, and where that is an unconditional love that we're always seeking. We seek it in so many different places, but we never find it. We might find a little bit, but not enough to actually touch us in the core of our heart. And so the process of meditation is to reawaken and, and, and help that to manifest more and more, that real knowledge that real understanding that I am an eternal spiritual being, none of what goes on in this world really matters except love. And the more we feel loved unconditionally, the more we feel that inner security, then the more we can actually love unconditionally and not expect to get what we need from another person in this world. Just like we can't give everything that someone else needs. You know, we're not, we're not the supreme person. So we're not able to fill someone else's cup completely. And no one else is to, able to fill our cup either. But if we can go within and rest our heart and mind on the sacred mantras that have been handed down since time immemorial, as the easiest process of self-realization, the easiest process to come to know our true essence and that true, our true lovableness, that inside we're, we're a spiritual being and we're loved unconditionally. So the mantras work to clean away those layers of what's called false ego. The false ego is that false conception that I am this body, I am this mind, I am these feelings, I am these emotions. You know, these things come and go, they change, but we stay the same. And, and when we chant these sacred mantras, it uncovers our true nature and we will experience being totally held and loved in a warm embrace by the Supreme Person and our Supreme Friend. And then we don't need to look outside anymore for validation of our worth. We are worthy, unconditionally loved, and we're always worthy. We don't have to be anything special. We don't have to be anything. We're always eternally loved and worthy. So the what we're going to do is a little bit of meditation now where you can rest your heart and rest your mind on these sacred mantras. And when your mind wanders off to going, I feel insecure, I don't feel loved enough, I don't feel appreciated enough, then just bring your mind straight back 
onto the sand of the mantras and rest your heart in the mantra. The mind is like a, a monkey and it goes all over the place and really often to totally negative stuff. You know, it, it doesn't generally manifest onto really positive stuff. It, it seems like it, you know, like to pull us down more than build us up. And you know, if we're built up on a superficial platform, then we're going to smash sooner or later. You know, it's like sometimes people become some famous star and some, whether it's sports or music or whatever it is. And you know, that, that doesn't last. And then, you know, at the end of their career, it's just like another nobody, you know, just another person in this world. Nobody's ever nobody. We're always um, an eternal, blissful, beautiful spirit soul, loved unconditionally. Okay, so the mantras that we're going to do today is Hari Bol and Nittai Gore. Hari Bol means to chant, and Nittai means eternal, and Gore means um, golden. So the Nittai and Gore is short for Nichananda and Chaitanya, uh, expansion, the incarnations of the Supreme Person, who appeared in this world about 500 years ago to teach us that we're loved, we don't have to be special, and if we rest our heart and mind in these sacred mantras, we'll experience complete peace, complete rest, and complete security. Thank you very much. You might like to join in with me. Nittai go Haribo Haribo Nittai go Nittai go Haribo Hare bo Nittai go Nittai go Hare bo Rest your heart and sing from your heart Hare bo Nittai go Nittai go Haribo Haribo Nittai go Nittai go Haribo